If you are here and you are like, I hate being an empath. This is a total curse. I don't want it. Well, if that's you, I invite you into taking a step back and taking a look at where you might not be setting boundaries and where you might not be supporting yourself and where you might be letting other people walk all over you, where you might be letting other people take advantage of you or manipulate you, and where you might be taking responsibility for somebody else's stuff. Hey, you, and welcome back to the Mindful Evolution Podcast. I'm Leah, your host, and today I want to dive into the concept of being an empath. And this conversation today is inspired by a video that I actually saw this morning on Instagram. And in this video, this individual was talking about how being an empath can be both a blessing and a curse. And I very much disagree with identifying as an empath being a curse, and I want to dive deeper into that today. So first, I want to talk about what it means to actually be an empath. Being an empath really means that you have a heightened ability to sense and understand people's mental and emotional experiences. And it's Being sensitive to the experiences that are happening within others around you. Being an empath is kind of like having this like antenna on your head that picks up these frequencies of everything happening all around you. You're you're picking up on the vibes, right? You're feeling the vibes. Most empaths will tell you That it's not just about being sensitive to it, but actually feeling it and understanding as if it is your own experience. And in my opinion, we all have this ability and what determines whether or not that ability is turned up or turned down is truly your awareness of yourself. Going within you, understanding what's happening internally And as you do that, you can have a better understanding of what's happening externally. In my own personal experience, I didn't realize that I was an empath until later on in my life, after college. And for a really long time, I had this feeling and experience of anxiety. And so this understanding and of all these things happening around me was experienced through the lens of anxiety for me. And when I started to gain a more clear picture of what was happening, it made sense. There's both challenges and beauty in being an empath. In my opinion, it's a gift. Like everything, it comes with its own challenges. But it's giving you an opportunity. And so that's what I want to dive into a little bit more today is what are these opportunities that come with being an empath? What are the challenges and why I don't see being an empath as a curse? So first of all, there's multiple different forms of being an empath, right? Being an empath can show up in different ways. You might be an emotional empath where you primarily feel other people's emotions. You might be a physical empath, where you might experience other people's symptoms, right? If someone else has a headache, you might have a headache too. You might be an intuitive empath, where you just have this strong sense of like knowing, right? You just like know something is going to happen, or you know this thing is going on around you without really knowing it, right? And then there's a nature empath. And nature empaths have deep connections to animals and to the environment. I think all of us have all of these. It's just a matter of where you fall on the spectrum. 
I think that there's many benefits and gifts to being an empath for both yourself and for others. First of all, being an empath fosters deep connections and it helps you understand what others are going through. And through that, you actually have the ability to go deeper with the people around you. Being an empath has allowed me to create and foster deeper connections with my friends and most of the people around me in many ways. It's not always easy, but it's possible. Being an empath usually comes with having really good listening skills because you are sensing and experiencing as your own and you have to listen in order to do that. And normally... People that know empaths usually feel very seen, heard, and understood. And it often leads to having the ability to support with conflict resolution because you're listening, you're able to observe from multiple lenses and points of view, and you're able to really get a clear clear understanding, really, of what's happening for Many different people, not just for yourself. And through that, it gives you the ability to resolve conflict, in my opinion, a little bit more easily because you're not just looking through this one perspective. Something that I always encourage my clients to do is start to try on, I call them hats, try on these different hats and start to look through different lenses. Because as you look through different lenses, you start to gain different perspectives And that allows you to navigate challenging experiences or wavy waters with a little bit more ease. Another benefit of being an empath is emotional insight that ultimately leads you to be a natural helper. And so if you identify as an empath, you may understand this, that Naturally, you just want to help others because you feel and you sense them and you have compassion for them, usually. And being an empath can also help with developing your intuition and, in my opinion, can lead to faster personal growth. And this happens because you have this heightened sense of awareness of not just your internal environment, but your, also your external environment and how it's influencing your internal environment. So you have opportunities through being an empath that, in my opinion, are a gift and kind of give you a level up in many ways. And again, if you don't identify as an empath, but you're like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of curious about this because possibly, but I don't identify with it yet. Or if you just don't identify with it at all, And you're like, nah, that's totally not me. I'm totally not an empath. That's okay. But I do want you to know that I believe you have that ability. And I do believe that there are strengths like we're talking about here and gifts in trying that hat on and like being able to be with being an empath in certain circumstances and situations. That doesn't mean you always have to be an empath. You might be able to turn that on and turn that off. And I I am going to get into that in a little bit because I do think that this is an important thing to be able to do is be discerning about when you choose to step into the empath and also when you take a step back and choose to maybe not be with that part of yourself for a minute. So that leads me to challenges around being an empath. Number one, And I'm sure that most empaths can understand most of these. It can be draining. It can be emotionally draining and energetically draining. It can lead you to have a difficult time setting boundaries. And oftentimes, you might be a people pleaser, which can lead you to not prioritize yourself and not prioritize your self-care and lead to prioritizing others instead. And it can be really difficult to set those boundaries. It is possible, though. Another challenge around being an empath can ultimately lead to 
a challenging time regulating your own emotional state of being because there's so much stimuli and so much coming in and so many things that you're feeling from others and experiencing as your own, it can be challenging to regulate your emotions. With being an empath, burnout and overwhelm are two very real things. They can be avoided, absolutely, but they are very real things because if you're not mindful of how much you're taking in and taking on, you might lead to experiencing overwhelm and if you don't check that, check it at the door, it can lead to burnout. Being an empath can also make relationships challenging at times. Because you do want to give so much to others and you might neglect yourself. It can make things challenging at times as well because sometimes people can identify an empath and they may take advantage of that. They may use some manipulation tactics and it might not be consciously. It might be subconsciously. They may subconsciously use manipulation tactics and take advantage of you. Because they know that you're giving and they just want to receive and keep on taking. And oftentimes when people can't give to themselves, they need to take from others. Or they feel they need to take from others. And then lastly here, being an empath can also lead to what we call analysis paralysis. And this is when we get stuck overthinking a situation and it makes it really hard for us to take action. And so with all of these challenges here, they can be avoided. You might experience them as a challenge, but with more awareness around your internal state of being, your emotional self, the balance that you have in giving to others and giving to yourself, right, prioritizing you, you can be mindful of how you're being an empath, really. And so this brings me back to the video that I watched earlier on today on Instagram, where this guy was talking about how being an empath can be a curse. And I really don't agree with this. I I very much disagree with this. I don't think in any way, shape, or form it's a curse. And I don't think it's a curse because... Ultimately, when you identify as an empath, I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's a beautiful thing because ultimately, if you are identifying as an empath, it's highlighting the fact that you have a deeper level of awareness to sense, feel, observe, notice, the experiences of others around you. And that takes significant amounts of awareness to be able to tap into that. But there is importance in protecting yourself. And this is something that I talk about with my clients as well, is the importance of having awareness and setting boundaries. This conversation that we're about to dive into around boundaries can apply and should apply. I don't love the word should, but it should. It should apply to everything else in your life. Because in order to find balance, I don't think you ever actually find it. I think this it's this constant search for balance. Because the moment you find it, something else is going to happen and a domino effect happens and you might be thrown off from the center point and then you need to refine it again. If you think about how a child learns, they're constantly, sorry, how a child learns to walk, they're constantly learning to find balance. And how do they do that? By failing. By falling, by losing their balance, then they can refine it again, right? And so setting boundaries is really, really important to energetically and emotionally support and protect yourself. And so what does this look like as an empath? This might look like walking into a room and recognizing that the energy is just super off. Maybe there's a lack of communication happening between two parties. Maybe someone's in a bad mood. 
right? You, you just feel it. It's palpable. And you walk in there and setting a boundary may, ch- may be choosing to put your energetic shell around your body. It's a technique that I use and teach my clients as well. And it may be choosing to not take on anyone else's stuff. Energetically separate yourself from what is happening. You can see it. You can have compassion for it. You can have empathy for it. But you don't have to take it on as your own. And so there are ways to set boundaries like this where you are protecting yourself, where you are prioritizing yourself, and where you are not taking on someone else's energy as your own. And so setting boundaries is very, very important in all relationships in your life, not just the intimate ones. Relationships with your parents and your family, those ones are even more important to set boundaries around, in my opinion, because it's it can be more challenging, we'll say, to set boundaries around those. And so it becomes very important to be mindful of setting boundaries around those relationships. But this applies to everything. This applies to your friends. This applies to your business, the actual business itself. This also applies to your colleagues in business, right? Setting boundaries is so important to make sure that you are able to constantly work on finding this balance. And if you find yourself off balance, recognize it and take action to bring yourself back in to balance the best you can. And so... In my opinion, if you're identifying as being an empath and you're also identifying with that being a curse, it is my personal opinion that you are avoiding taking responsibility for doing the personal and inner work to make sure that you are always supported, that you are always grounded, and that you are always prioritizing yourself. Being an empath is an opportunity and and an invitation to practice boundary setting, to practice self-regulation, to practice prioritizing you. Remember, this is your life. This isn't anyone else's life. This is your life. And if you're not prioritizing you, to me, are, you know, I, I guess I'll ask you, if you're not prioritizing you, are you actually living your life for you? Question mark. I definitely don't think that being an empath is a trauma response. I just think it's an, a heightened sense of awareness of what's happening within your body, within your being. And it, again, invites you into learning and into adapting. It invites you into prioritizing yourself and into your self-care. Being an empath is a gift and a catalyst to faster personal growth. If you tune in and listen and learn from the things that doesn't, that don't feel good. And if you are here and you are like, I hate being an empath. This is a total curse. I don't want it. Well, if that's you, I invite you into taking a step back and taking a look at where you might not be setting boundaries and where you might not be supporting yourself and where you might be letting other people walk all over you, where you might be letting other people take advantage of you or manipulate you, and where you might be taking responsibility for somebody else's stuff. I'm going to say that again. If you are, are if you identify with being an empath, and you feel like it's a curse, I invite you into looking at where you are taking on somebody else's work. As a body worker and a massage therapist and a pain management specialist, when I first got into the world of this work, I was working hands-on with clients or seeing like six to eight clients a day. It was a lot. But I was going home and I was noticing that I was experiencing pains in areas that I was treating my clients, where my clients came in with pain. I was experiencing it in my physical body. 
I started experiencing a lot of emotional challenge. I started experiencing a lot of nervous system dysregulation. And I had a mentor ask me what practices and boundaries I was using and setting before I walked into that room and laid my hands on every single client. And it got me thinking, like, wow, at that point, I wasn't doing anything to protect myself. And this is a tool that I believe every single person in the world could benefit from. Why? Because we are energetic beings. And energies resonate and influence one another. And so by protecting yourself and setting boundaries and being aware of when something's shifting within you, you can prevent yourself from energetically being influenced by something else. So I, I don't believe that being an empath is a curse. Again, it's been an invitation for me into learning more about myself, learning more about what throws my energy off, learning more about how to support me. And it's allowed me to grow so much. And I still identify as an empath. But I'm going to choose when to take on someone's stuff and when not to. This is a really powerful message that I learned and I, w- I should say a lesson I learned in one of my ayahuasca ceremonies. It was my third and fourth ceremony and it was really challenging, <laughs> very challenging. But I learned something really important during that ceremony. I learned the importance of protecting myself, protecting my temple, protecting my energetic being. Now think about it. Like centuries ago, if you had a beautiful temple with golds inside, you're going to put walls around the temple and probably put protection outside the temple so that somebody doesn't Come on in on their horse and take all your gold. Don't let other people take your gold. Protect your gold. You can do that by setting boundaries, by being aware of when you feel a shift, and by implementing practices to support you in doing so. This might look like having checkpoints throughout your day to check in with yourself. Maybe it's taking a breath. Breathing in and breathing out and like as you breathe out, thinking about just like pushing away any energy that's not supporting you or that's shifting your being in a way that's not enjoyable or pleasant. Checkpoints could look like getting into the car and before you put the key in the ignition, checking in with yourself. Did you take someone else's stuff on? Can you let it go? Before you walk into an event, have you set your boundaries Have you put protection around yourself? How's your mindset? Are you ready or are you just like throwing yourself into this big event and not preparing yourself and not grounding yourself and not finding your balance first? And that's the key. Find your balance first. And again, it's always your choice. You always get to choose 